Hello and welcome. We are so excited that you have joined us for this session on comprehensive transition planning and building the trifecta. Before we jump in, we wanted to make sure that you were aware that this presentation will be shared with you, as well as the handout that you see on the left hand side of the screen. So you will be able to access this material and the information after our time together today. My name is Sarah Bazemore. I am the School Counseling Specialist in the Office of Student Services at the Virginia Department of Education. Uh, and I have been both a school counselor as well as a special education teacher in my time in education. And so I am thrilled to have the opportunity to speak to both roles today as we speak about this really important element of, of a student's educational career. And I'm going to hand it over to my co-host, Ms. Mary Ann Moore. Hi, everybody. It's nice to be here today talking to you and um, about you and your students' transition-focused IEP. Um, I'm your secondary transition specialist with the Virginia Department of Education, and I'm in the Office of Special Education Program Improvement. Of course, you can see my email address, so you can get in touch with me at any time. Our goals for today are to understand the importance of that comprehensive transition planning process and program, and then also to understand the value of the trifecta. And you may be wondering what we mean when I, when I say the word trifecta. Sorry, keep going. Okay. Um, at the trifecta is really, we use that because at play as we develop and implement that transition-focused IEP, we have three really powerful forces at work. And the first one is a student. The student is at the heart of this. The student has to be involved with this. Um, the other, of course, is the family, the parents, um, other family members are involved because you're with the student, you're with your students the uh, majority of the time, and you also are supporting this planning and learning process. And the third part of the trifecta, of course, is the school. And those, the staff in the school, teachers, case managers, school counselors, and related service providers, all those people that are providing experiences and support as the student goes on this uh, journey. Because we don't, and one of the major things to think about is that we really don't want this to be the student as the silent passenger. This is just things we're doing to the student. This is, this is work that we do with the student, the planning and the implementation. The student is at the heart of all of this, so they have to have a student voice. One of the things we uh, think about in transition planning is we begin with the end in mind. Where do we envision this student? Where does the student envision themselves as they, um, as they're ending school and exiting and moving on to life after high school? Well, you're, you as parents are, and family members are here today because you have a student who's 13, 14 years old, about to turn 14 years old. And that's when our IEPs begin to be focused on the student's plans to move to the end point, life after high school, what's going to happen. And this plan is gonna be based on transition assessment information so that we know what the student's strengths, preferences, and interests are. We use that information to develop those post-secondary goals on employment, education, and training, all of which we're looking at after high school. And for some youngsters, we'll also want to have that post-secondary independent living um, goal. The trip is supported, or the journey is supported, by things like the annual goals, the transition services, which can be work-based learning. Some, some youngsters in Virginia can go to the PERT program at Wilson Workforce and receive a very comprehensive vocational evaluation. We might have related service providers speech pathologists, occupational therapists, physical therapists that are involved and support moving closer to those post-secondary goals, and of course, the ever-important instruction. Um, below you see uh, the exploration of strengths, interests, and preferences. One of the tools that you can use through I'm Determined 
to help the student express what are their um, their post school goals. Why did we develop those? And that happens when um, this, that happens through that one pager where the student is going to can um, communicate their strengths their preferences, their interests, and there's even a part on uh, a one pager where they can talk about areas where they think they need some assistance in. Sarah, you wanna talk about the other really good tool we can use? Absolutely, so there's another amazing tool that is free for any student in Virginia. It's called the Virginia Wizard, and it has a, a plethora of different uh, resources that are embedded within it, everything from uh, valuations that students can take to recognize what they value as well as what their interests are so that they can determine what career clusters best align with them as an individual and start to explore different pathways that they can go down both in their educational career as well as you know their post-secondary options. So it's a great tool that, that school counselors can utilize with students and then also parents and teachers can, can access and use to, to help drive a student's education. Again, it's a great one to help us keep that, that end in mind when we are talking about, about school and making sure that what we're doing is aligning with that student's goals uh, and, and what they're interested in in the long run. And so the Virginia Wizard is something that can be utilized by even students as young as really third grade uh, all the way through our high school students and it's often used to help develop a uh, academic career plan and also an academic career portfolio the portfolio is something that begins when students are in elementary school and they begin to develop a compository of different pieces of evidence and uh, tasks that they do that align with with themselves as an individual as well as what interests they might have moving forward and it's a collection of everything from from the results of those different assessments to uh, you know a record of maybe awards they've received or hobbies they've done or community service that they've been part of and then that is something that can be used to help drive what's called the ACP or the academic career plan where a student would work with their school counselor to develop a plan uh, that would reflect how their coursework in high school is going to uh, help them to head down that road towards whatever their post-secondary goal might be. So if our roadmap is this uh, is the actual transition plan. I feel like the, that one pager and some of the resources in the Virginia Wizard and some of these activities and things that we're talking about are kind of those compasses that help to guide and keep us on that path. Yeah. Sarah, do you want to tell people um, how, they're, how they can um, utilize that as, as a parent or how their student has access to that Virginia Wizard? Sure. So the Virginia Wizard is linked right here in the presentation. So you can click on that and it'll take you to the website. If your student does not know what their account name and number is or how to access it, you can still click on in, in there and play around uh, with some of the different tools. But I would reach out to that your student's uh, school counselor and see if they're able to, to help you uh, actually access the account um, for your child. Okay. And uh, let's just to let you know, as a state resource, just like all the resources you're going to see um, on the Undetermined website, all of those tools and things, they are free to use uh, by parents and uh, teachers. So they're open. And the wizard, of course, is also accessible and free to use by our Virginia parents and students. This is a great visual of um, when we talk about the trifecta of the, um, in this presentation, that we know these three really amazing forces are at work and the student who is really at the heart of what we're doing. We are the supporters at this point and um, we have some tools and some things that we can use to help the student understand more about what they're interested in and that, about that roadmap and how you get to those, that end point. But it's a really powerful um, combination of these three forces when we know the student is at the heart of this and has a voice. It's, sometimes it's the first time students have been asked uh, um, questions about what do you want to do after school? What do you think your strengths are? 
what interests you? And of course, as family members, you are doing uh, the supporting uh, of the student and school staff are kind of helping to, helping the students uh, move closer through instruction, but also helping them sometimes re-identify opportunities that might uh, fit into that uh, resume as they exit and start looking at employment or post-secondary education. And of course, again, the parent and family as supporters. So it's a powerful force when everybody is working together on this uh, transition-focused IEP. Sarah, did you have anything else you want to talk about with this one? Nope, I think you, you covered it uh, beautifully. Okay. So now we're gonna transition into talking about each of those roles specifically and, and how they really strengthen the process and, and, and result in what we call that cumulative uh, or that, that really comprehensive uh, transition plan. So Sarah, I'll talk first about uh, maybe the case manager and some of those related service providers. So the case manager, and sometimes we say it's the IEP teacher, the special education teacher, but this is the person who is really pulling things together as we develop that transition focused IEP. Um, they get information from teachers. They may have been the person to do some of that age appropriate transition assessment that they compile in the present level of performance that you'll read, uh, that they uh, sometimes orchestrate things that the student is going to have an opportunity to go to Wilson Workforce and receive a comprehensive vocational evaluation. It's typically the case manager who's pulling all of that together and talking to the parent about that opportunity um, and getting signatures, permission to go, arranging the, the bus that takes students uh, to Fishersville, to WWRC. So that case manager, again, and sometimes the case manager changes year to year, and in some divisions, it's the case manager is the same person all the way through um, school with the student, or not elementary school, but high school with that student. So they really get to know a lot about that student and hopefully a lot about the family and how to work with the, the team um, at school. Sometimes I think about it as like the architect. The architect doesn't have to know um, how to wire a house, but the architect needs to know that the house has to have electricity, so we have to have somebody that can come in and do that. Well, the case manager has that overarching information. Of course, every teacher your child has contributes to this plan because they know things about your student and the academics that may be where they are um, doing very well and don't need a lot of assistance, but also the areas where students do struggle and maybe need some additional uh, assistance. And then our related service providers, sometimes they worked with your youngster when they were in elementary school, where we were really focused about, focused on what's going on right in the schoolhouse, but now we're looking at what goes on outside of the schoolhouse, and sometimes the student was released from services, but now we need to start talking to a service provider again because this youngster has uh, chosen a career that maybe they will need some additional assistance with. Uh, that I, and a good example I can use is a student that I knew that wanted to work in culinary but um, had, uh, had had a traumatic brain injury and so standing for a long period of time was an issue. So one of the things that we did is have a, um, an occupational therapist look at some of the some of the activities and things that the student would would need would be doing and how they could do some um, a series of exercises to build their strengths up. That OT also went in and watched the student work in the in, the, in a kitchen and was able to identify some. Um, assistive technology that was going to help the student. And sometimes it's low tech and sometimes it's high tech, but what do we need to do to help this student move forward um, with that career choice? So that, and again, that physical therapist also sometimes is doing activities to help the student, um, again, uh, receive whatever, that, receive that related service so that they um, are able to move forward with that career. So. They might not have been working with the student for a little while, 
doesn't mean we have to come in and pull kids out of class and, and um, have them see a PT or a speech therapist several times a week, but that provider may just be providing some consult and then the teacher or a paraprofessional and sometimes even the student takes on the responsibility of uh, following through, particularly when it's something like activities to build strength so you can stand longer. I think those are all just such important pieces to talk about and how every single person on this list under that school staff is really bringing a unique uh, skill set to the student or, or in the case of the school counselor, sometimes the school counselor is assisting in developing skills, but also school counselors can align uh, some opportunities that are maybe within the community or within the school that sometimes students aren't aware of and they can say, you know, maybe that there's a, a, a club or an organization or something that they, they know of uh, that would be a good skill set for this student or provide the student an opportunity to, to try something new. And school counselors are excellent at, at, at bridging that connection and, and opening doors and, and helping students to find those opportunities uh, that, that sometimes they're not even aware exist. So, it's really important that school counselors are, are part of the conversation and they also bring a lot of the knowledge of what's within an ACP or an ACPP and they can speak to those uh, you know, during this developmental process and making sure that a student's uh, academic career plan aligns with their transition plan, that they're speaking to the same goals and that they have uh, similar you know, interests and uh, that that alignment is, is really strong so that those two plans are, are working together and not in silos. So I think that that all of these members of the team are, are just essential. And, and we have this little car here because we talk about how they all build and, and help create the car for the student that's going to help allow them to go on the journey. Um, and that, you know, every single professional at the school is going to contribute something different to the make of that car but you know if you don't have all those people at the table that car is not going to run as efficiently or maybe as well so just making sure that 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 you have all of those professionals are part of it so that so that you're really getting the most powerful vehicle that you can for for your student uh, i think of uh, a parent uh, or guardian or that family person that uh, we, I've heard them describe, uh, describe themselves as the case manager for life. And I think that that really is an accurate description. Your child is yours forever. And uh, you were the one that started out with them when they started their lives. And you have that historical perspective of the student, you know, where they've been, you know, where you've all been in this process of getting to the point where we're really looking at, now we're looking at um, exiting high school, the K-12 system, we're talking about um, leaving free appropriate public education and moving into that bigger, broader world of post-secondary. So whether it's to go to a university, whether it's going into an apprenticeship program, that life, we're, we're really looking at that life change and you as that parent, you're with them. We, um, at, at the K-12 system, our, our involvement, direct involvement, really ends when they exit school, either at um, 22 or 21 or 22, or they graduate with that, uh, a, a diploma. So we're, um, but you're with them from the beginning to, the, to after high school. Um, and again, you have that historical perspective that you bring that you can share with the team. But you also have the important perspective of outside of school. What is this student doing when they're not in school? And you have um, a support role with that as well. If a student ends up in a work-based learning experience, sometimes that means you have to provide some permission and some assistance sometimes to make sure the student does get to that work-based learning experience or they're participating fully in that experience. But again, that um, definite, that uh, term that I heard a parent say once is case manager for life, I think is really apropos in this setting. 
it's important that we're all working and supporting the students, that you have them the most, most of the time, and you really know your student far better than um, we ever could at school. So I think like we use the, the idea that you all are providing that fuel for their, for the student's tank so that that car goes. Sarah, did you want to add anything? I think that's a great, a great, uh, a great summary of, of how important uh, the, you know, the caretaker's voice is in this and the, uh, you know, I always just re remind parents and, and guardians that when we're meeting, that they are really the expert on, on the student and they need to, to share with, with the team, um, like you said, that historical perspective and, and what, what the student's interests are outside of school. Uh, and I think that because parents and, and caretakers are the case managers for life, that fuel is so important because they're going to have to provide it for the long run and they see the student, you know, all the way through that journey. Okay. And for me, um, the student is at the center of all of this, that we do not want uh, our youngsters to be that silent passenger on this journey that just sits and things are done to them. We want them to be part of this. We want them to help guide us as well as they're preparing for their future. Because I've heard kids say, it's my life, right? And that's right, it is. Eventually, it is all about you and what you do and what you want to do. So the student is, um, we have the steering wheel, and I think that's uh, where we, we're looking at the student beginning to take control and driving that vehicle as they articulate their dreams, where they want to be, the things they want to do. And actually, they become the guide for all of us. And uh, that's, that's different from what school looked like when they were younger, where um, they had more um, direction, for, a lot of direction from parents and from uh, the school and the teacher. Now we're talking about them helping us support their movement toward their post-school life. They're driving the car. I think this is one of my favorite pieces of this is that you really see students step into that, almost that, that transition and that adulthood is that when they start to take that wheel and they start to really own their not only their education but their future and uh use that ownership piece is so important because we know that we want them to to build their independence and that we want them to feel a lot of hope and ownership over the direction that they're heading and so sometimes if a student is is um having a difficult time finding their voice or maybe they aren't sure uh, how to explain their goals or vocalize that to uh, adults in their life. The school counselor is, is a great resource because they aren't your traditional um, teacher or uh, you know, educator. They kind of have that dual role of, of the caretaker at school as well as having their foot in the door with, with what's happening in the school building. And so I think sometimes school counselors can, can work with students to help them to really take that ownership if they're reluctant to do so uh, and, and form that relationship with them so that they feel comfortable and, and are willing to take the risk and step, step into that independence and, and that um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big jump if you think about it from a kid's point of view to, to go from being uh, in the passenger seat to being in the steering wheel and, and or in the driver's seat and, and actually being the one directing uh, directing the path. So uh, school counselors can definitely assist and, and help students um, if they are, are, are reluctant to do that. And I don't want you to leave you with the impression that, um, that the student decides this is my post-secondary goal, this is what I'm going to do for work after high school, and that doesn't change. Obviously, it changes as youngsters have more experience. You can think you want to do something, but when you get involved with it and you have, maybe you join a club or you do some volunteer work or you have that work-based learning experience, you might decide, no, this really isn't what I want to do. I want to do something else. I've discovered something else. So that's part of that journey is that discovery. So just because we write a transition plan for a 14-year-old 
doesn't mean that we think that that's going to be the same plan exactly as they exit school. But we do have some kids that they know right up front, this is what I want to do, and they stay pretty consistent with that. So don't think that we're um, trying to say that we develop the plan and it doesn't change. It does change. It can change more than once even during the school year when right. youngsters need changes. So it, it's a fluid um, document. And those um, the things that are those tools that are on the Undetermined website are tools that can help your child, like the good day plan. And again, I always like the um, one pager, but there are goal setting is another uh, activity and uh, template that is on the, the undetermined website that you can use that's not just to set a goal, it actually helps the student develop those steps to achieve that goal. And that's also something that's real important. So again, we know things change and we've developed some really great tools for you. Yeah, I think that's a really important po point and to talk about it's not written in pen, it's written in pencil and students need to know that too. And that again just circles back to why their voice is so important because they need to let us know if if something isn't for them, if they've now started to go down that road and they realize that this isn't actually what I want. They need to feel comfortable and, and able to vocalize that and, and we can all work together to change course. And I think that what I love about this is that, you know, we all have heard stories of, of young adults entering into the workforce and thinking they know what they want to do and then realizing, you know, that after they've invested a lot of time and money and energy into this one career, they recognize that it's actually not for them and, and how, how terrible that can be because they either feel stuck or they feel like it's too late to, to turn around um, or they do shift gears but it's a you know a, a financial loss for them and so this is a great way to allow students to explore and to really make sure that that when they do graduate they what they decide to do and where the path they decide to go down is the right one so that so that they that that, that doesn't occur or doesn't happen to them um, and that's why exploration is just so essential uh, for students and and it's exciting to see that there are really two concrete opportunities for students with disabilities to be doing that through their ACP and their transition plan. And, yeah. and the two of those aligning and working together is just, um, you know, it's got a great checks and balances system for, for kiddos. And I think one of the things that, from my perspective, is exciting about being a, a transition specialist and maybe also, Sarah, being a counselor, is that um, when I look at this slide, I think we get to be in on that, helping the youngster develop their wings and spread their wings. That youngster does the work and the family definitely provides um, so much of the support to the student. Uh, but just being part of that um, with a youngster is I think what keeps me uh, liking my job a lot. I totally agree. I think it's one of, um, when I was in the field, it was probably one of the pieces of my uh, job that I took the most seriously because I, I often said to my students and reminded myself that this decision on what we're going to do with our life is probably one of the biggest decisions we make. We spend so much time in whatever career we, we select and and we've all known people who are not, who don't enjoy what they do and how um, difficult that can be on on them and, and how it's hard to have a happy life. And that's what we all want for, for our students and our children is just for them to be happy and successful. And, and this is something that, you know, as a team, we can all support and help them to, to figure out how to do that. I think it's just such a, a privilege and, and a wonderful opportunity to be able to, like you said, Marion, um, help them to, to develop those wings and to be able to to find what's going to make them happy, um, you know, as they as they grow up. Right. So it's so, one of my favorite favorite things as well. Yeah. Well, for more conversation, if you have questions, and I I would assume you might because we did a, kind of a broad stroke of that trifecta and the transition planning process. That um, you might want to call either Sarah or myself or get in touch with us. And the nice thing too about counselors and transition specialists is 
when we don't ha if I don't have an answer, I bet I know somebody who does. We have a lot of connections in the community and uh, with other agency folks who can assist when we need to bring in some additional help. So it's kind of like a directory, I think, sometimes, Sarah. <laughs> but I, I'm, um, I hope you all have a great day uh, and that you find some other presentations that you can use and uh, to build uh, your resources to help your youngster as uh, that child begins to spread his wings and gets ready to move into the world of post-secondary. Thank you so much. Thank you.